with a video review to SB19 Story Episode 1 Sound Break. And you guys were requesting this to be yes. done on the last reaction when we did to Mappa on the Wish Bus. So we had to check this out. That's right. And uh, it's another documentary series Bros. of Casual Chuck. By Casual Chuck, that's yeah. right. So, so shout out Casual Chuck for another one of these great videos, guys. We can't wait to get into this and learn more about SB19. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time talking, guys. Bring you straight to the reaction. Just before we do, don't forget to like, comment, comment subscribe, subscribe, and join La Familia on the road to 30K. But let's get into this. Let's go. Disclaimer, this video is only based on my personal research. I might miss some details and it's possible to have discrepancies. But I did my best to get as much accurate information as possible. So enjoy! This Culture. is called Triple, a group of talented performers and comedians from Korea you've probably never heard of. They were formed back in 1994 when the word K-pop hasn't even been invented. In 2002, one of the members made the biggest mistake of his life, which will change the entire course of P-pop history. Sound break. Do you remember this song? started with this man, Jong Song Han. When he left the trio in 2002 to become an entrepreneur, Cult Triple became Cult 2. Most of their fans definitely thought that Song Han's decision was a huge mistake because the remaining members started racking up different awards in the entertainment industry. If he only stuck around, he would have gotten those awards too. But this man's decision was final. He used all of his savings to build an event organizing company called Show BT Entertainment. Yep, I'm talking about Tatang Robin. Tatang noticed how passionate Filipino fans were during the rise of K-pop, so he wanted to organize K-pop concerts and events that promote Korean and Filipino culture. To make that happen, he needed entertainers. A group of young people that would be part of the package of their service as an event organizer. Just real quick, I just want to I just make a quick mention. Yeah, Filipino fans are some of the best fans that you'll ever find. Oh, you guys are cool. awesome. You guys are some of the best fans. You guys are super they're right devoted. Or die. Yeah, they're right or die. I mean, but once honestly, you guys like something, you like it. That's it. And I, honestly, like, uh, I mean, the a have shown it. The Easy Mail fans have shown it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we get a lot of love from, you know, the Filipinos. And, you know, we are, we are greatly appreciated of that as well. That's right. Uh, but guys, I'm, I'm, I'm excited we'll to right check this. out more of this discography. Let's get into this. So he wanted to organize K-pop concerts and events that promote Korean and Filipino culture. To make that happen, he needed entertainers. A group of young people that will be part of the package of their service as an event organizer. We are talking about people who can do dancing, singing, and even act as servants like waiting tables and assisting guests. So he held an audition and hundreds of young talents applied. 30 of them passed as trainees. They were then called Nara, which in Korean means country and is the national tree of the Philippines. Oh, wow. They went to multiple events together, including the fan meeting event on the K-pop group called Off-Road. After numerous events, Tatang Robin saw something special when it comes to Filipino talent. He realized that some of his trainees were far too talented to just end up as small-time performers. So he decided to launch the first P-pop boy group that underwent strict Korean-type training. 
Out of the 30 trainees, only few have made it. SB19. Mm -hmm. John Paolo John Pablo. He always wanted to be a performer. As a young dreamer, he joined several competitions as a soloist and also a member of the K-pop dance cover group called PHP. As a trainee, he was the guy who shows up early and leaves late despite juggling a full-time job as a data analyst to provide for his family. He was the first one selected due to his undeniable diligence and leadership qualities. He is known to have critically acclaimed songwriting ability a badass rapper and was often dubbed as a genius but he consistently denied it because he claimed to be just a hard worker. This made him the destined leader of the group. He debuted with the name Sejin but later changed his name to Pablo. Now that the methodical leader is chosen, they needed more members. Tatang Robin just got a genius composer in Pablo so they needed someone who can dance and this next guy is exactly that and even more. Stop. Yep. Stelvester Ahero. He was only 16 when he started competing as a dancer while studying. He was a born winner despite growing up as a bullied kid. He made performing his escape from the harsh reality of the world. He did a great job channeling the negative aspect of his life and converting it by winning multiple K-pop dance cover competitions wow. with his group Seiya. Yeah. He is also a hard worker. He was teaching dance to kids while competing. There was a point when he worked too hard that it threatened his life due to poor health. He is a very skilled choreographer. In fact, he's the main culprit behind most of SB19's snappy and amazingly synchronized dance routines. But little did they know that dancing wasn't even his only talent. He easily became the main heavenly voice of the group because his vocals were just This world. Did you see that look though? You're just like, oh. <laughs> hey, he's a true Filipino man. I'm yeah. telling you, a lot of Filipinos are very talented in dance and not only dance but singing as well. Yes. And I mean, Stell has it both. So, hey man, it couldn't be any different. I, I think it's so cool how you kind of see how their group is kind of coming together. Yeah, and stuff exactly. Like that, you know, good yeah. management. Got Pablo, like, yes. we got Stell. And now he's going to talk about the next few. The one thing I've noticed is that I feel like good management is really key to having a good group come out of that yeah. kind of a thing. I mean, you know we just reacted to BTS. Exactly. Just reacted to BTS. And it reminds me of their similar story where they were kind of like, I don't want to say hand-picked, but they weren't, they weren't people who were necessarily groomed for this kind of a thing from birth. They kind of just came from their own little walks of life. They all came from their own little parts. And they had these talents that were just waiting to be shown. And these people saw them and said, we're going to make a great group with you guys. And, and, and that versus history. And they have very like similar things going on like SB19 are also their own individuals exactly just like BTS exactly. they're their own individual each and every one of them brings something to the table mm -hmm. and something that sets them apart from others exactly so I can't wait to uh, see what the other three are all about we're just on your side. He I know it drives me crazy. The main vocalist, the lead dancer, and choreographer of the group. Josh Santos. Josh Cullen Santos became homeless at the age of 16, and wow. it was his decision. 16 years He's old. had the worst childhood among the other members. From growing up in a toxic environment to being physically abused as a kid by their nanny. At an early age, he witnessed what it feels like to be a member of a middle-class family that went rock bottom in just a matter of months. He experienced getting evicted from apartments to smaller rooms. It came to a point when his family had nothing to eat but ketchup and salt. They had no permanent address. Because of that, Josh and his sister dropped out of school multiple times so they got bullied at school for being repeaters. Sometimes he would get into fistfights for defending her. Josh had enough of this so he took matters into his own hands by leaving. He became independent and started working as an internet cafe attendant. Using his own income, he took the alternative learning system and was able to finish his high school degree. Hey, Clearly had no background in performing. Not until he met new friends from the dance community which led to him meeting Stel oh, and Seiya. They became co-members and went on to win numerous K-pop dance cover competitions all over Asia. They even met BTS during one of their winning runs in Korea. That's amazing. In a way, Josh was saved by Stell after trying so hard to save himself. 
and it paid off because after training, Josh ended up debuting as the lead rapper and dancer of the group. Hey, I want to speak something about Josh as well. Um, I was told in the comments that he, you know, it's, it's crazy that we were reacting to Mappa, but the thing is, I don't think he actually met, he ever met his dad. Uh, really? And that's what they were saying in the comments below. Like, you know, it, it's a sad song because Josh, you know, um, I think he, he took a big lead in that song, but he never actually met his father. I'm like, wow, wow. that's, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. And then, um, ironically, we were talking about BTS. And, they and then actually, they mentioned Stout they had and, them. Yeah. Uh, Josh has actually met, met them. BTS. Yes, because of their dance group. And I guess they go, you know, way, way back. back. And it's just crazy, man. It's crazy to see. And it's crazy, like I said, like all different walks of life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, Everything's and it's, circle, it's crazy how the two troubled one, Josh and Sylvester, they both, like, through their, through their pain, through their suffering, they found their muse through dancing and music and that's just awesome to see how, they, how that brought them together yeah and they won competitions they won like competitions well, and yeah. everything they got to meet bts for goodness that's sake freaking dope i mean look at this guy he has a bts shirt sure on yeah <laughs> Made off because after the training, Josh ended up debuting as the lead rapper and dancer of the group. Justin, Justin to Josh didn't have to audition. Apparently, he was a very good looking guy that when he joined a talent workshop as a teenager, Show BT immediately took notice and offered him to become a trainee to improve his singing and dancing skills. Okay. He was one of the late joiners, and when he did, he immediately saw a familiar face in Josh. You look familiar. <laughs> Apparently, the two had a stint in performing together in a K pop dance cover group called Zero to Hero. Oh, nice. Hey, welcome to the world next door with us. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. What are the chances, man? So Justin as well wasn't new in the world of performing. He auditioned to be a part of the televised Pinoy boy band superstar show, but he didn't even make it to the live auditions. Perhaps it was fate. He didn't have great singing skills at the time. It was only when he became a trainee that he improved astoundingly in the vocal department. He went on to finish his college degree in multimedia arts while training, which hey. earned him a skill in filmmaking. He then got selected to debut as the main visual, the sub-vocalist, and the creative director of the group. He was the would-be director behind the record-breaking P-pop music video, What? And more. But that's a story for another video. Daddy chill! At this point, Show BT seemed to have completed the group. Four members in a P-pop group, a nice even number. Two rappers and two vocalists. They were perfectly balanced, but they felt like something was missing. Perhaps someone was missing. Someone who could take this already great group of guys and push them to achieve the next level. The extraordinary level. Someone so naturally gifted that he could stand out in the presence of the already talented group of young artists. This venture that Tatang Robin took needed an apex. So he started the online auditions. Hey. When Josh heard about it, he was like, I know a guy. Felix! You know about Felix John Sasson is such a specimen. He, always he was so naturally hair. gifted that excelling in sports looked like a walk in the park for him. He grew up in the man, church. Murder the man just Steph Curry that shot, boy. He just <laughs> yeah. stepped back from like a 35 and just laced that shit. For three. Bang! Lace that bitch. Swish! Philip is in the mix. Let's go. Philip John Susan is such a specimen. He was so naturally gifted that excelling in sports looked like a walk in the park for him. He grew up in the church under the care of his grandparents. He was an artistic kid, so he was active as an editorial cartoonist in school. Wow. Nobody taught him to play musical instruments. He taught himself by just listening to the music, so he ended up becoming a southpaw guitarist. But wow. he later fixed it as he learned more. He didn't even know that he could dance until he was forced to in order to get good grades during their school entry. Sorry, that's just, that's, just, that's just a really cool that's a really cool thing. So he's like so for example like. Uh, Jimi Hendrix was also a self-taught guitarist, as was like Buddy Guy, Muddy Waters, all those guys. So a, a lot, lot of greats. A, a lot, lot of greats. And a lot of them would play, as he was saying, southpaw, which is lefty. So instead of so instead of like playing with your left hand doing the strings, they play with their right hand doing the strings, and their left hand would do the strumming. All of them? It's just, well, yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Jimi Hendrix was so weird, he literally... He would get a right-sided guitar, and he would literally flip it the other way, and he would have his strings going backwards. Is, is uh, Carlos Santana the same or no? 
I couldn't tell you. I can't. Okay. I couldn't remember why I bring up his name. I was yeah. like, I can't remember if he was self-taught or not. It wouldn't surprise me if he was. Interesting. But that, yeah. But it's really interesting that they, that they always like the, teach the, the, themselves the, greatest, the opposite like, way. The musicians are usually a lot of them are self-taught. Yeah. We ended up becoming a Southpaw guitarist, but he later fixed it as he learned more. He fixed didn't it. even know he could dance until he was forced to in order to get good grades during their school entrance. After discovering dance, he transformed from a guy who didn't know it to someone who can fly. Ooh, look at because that of his raw talent, he ended up teaching dance to the entire school and continued on to form a K-pop dance cover dance group called Amigo 7. <laughs> Apparently, his group gave Josh's group so much trouble during during their early competitions because they were very good rivals. So he decided to recruit him. But Philip was hundreds of islands away and didn't have the money. What did Josh do? He shelled out for his plane ticket. With nothing else to lose, Philip went and left his previous life in the countryside. He then trained with the boys and officially debuted with them as Cam, the main dancer, the bass vocalist, and the lead rapper of the group. One thing to note is that they were an unlikely bunch because they wouldn't have met each other if Tatan Robin stayed with his already successful group in Korea. Justin failed his first audition so he didn't even bother to audition again because he thought he wasn't ready. And Josh wouldn't have attempted to recruit Ken if Show BT's training program didn't even exist. Dang. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the butterfly effect. When a small and seemingly insignificant occurrence has a rippling effect through time leading to a consequential event sometime long after the initial event, or as Google would put it, a phenomenon whereby a minute localized change in a complex system can have a large effect elsewhere. Yeah. Tatang Robin's so-called mistake back in 2002 led to forming the future P-Pop Kings. In 2018, SP19 was formed. The name of the group was carefully picked. The number 19 is the sum of Korea and the Philippines area code digits 82 and 63. So 8 plus 2 plus 6 plus 3 is 19. Wow. SB doesn't only mean show BT. It is all about their ultimate Deeper goal meaning. for Pinoy Sound to break into the music industry, which is fearlessly represented by this phrase. Sound break. Sound break. Shout out that Chuck, takes a lot of Chuck, editing. man. That took a lot a of editing. Lot of That's editing. very, very good work, though, man. Like you said, it, it makes it very easy to follow along. I feel like I learned a lot about all of them, man. And again, it's really cool how we see the compare, like how we see almost like the uh, the similarity between them and BTS. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it, it was a very similar thing where they were kind of just like some of them knew each other, some kind of had like you know, like they all come from so many different walks of life. Dude. It kind of just shows but also you that, like. like What's Destiny? I guess. You yeah, know Destiny. They destined, sense, yeah, they were destined to be SB19. Yeah, exactly. They, they knew each other from different paths, you know, and if and, one, and like, then they just brought it all together. Like Casual Chuck was just saying, if one thing would have been anything different, one thing, one little small thing, if that guy wouldn't have left Cult Three, which I remember when, I, when they first started talking about, it, I thought of Lonely Island because mm. he was like the comedians and their singers. I was like, that reminds me of Lonely Island. But anyways, um. Like, he, like if he on, never would have left, if he would have came back or just would have, like, done anything differently, wouldn't have had an open call, wouldn't have had audition, anything like that. Any, any little change, we wouldn't have SB19. So, like you're saying, it kind of is destiny. It kind of helped. This is how things play out. Um, but, guys, that was a really fun video. We hope you guys enjoyed it. The next one is, I think it said The, the zone, zone, right? That's part two, or episode two, <laughs> I should say. Uh, so yeah, if you guys want us to uh, react Check that to that, out. we we'll definitely react to it. Let us know in the comments, comments below. below. Um, like I said, we're very intrigued, and especially like the narration of uh, uh, Casual Chuck. Yeah, man, really, really superb job, man. Keep Fire. doing what you're doing, bro. You, uh, like I said, you're a great content creator. So yes. you know, we always gonna. And so guys, always support content you. creators like this, guys. And obviously, you can support us by liking, commenting, and following, and joining La, La Familia, Familia on the road to 30k. 30K. But until next time, peace. peace.